David had a son with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. And this son ended up being the example of everyone living life in America. His son was named Solomon, and we're gonna discuss the story of Solomon and how that can relate to your life. Solomon is the perfect example of what it is to allow life dictate what your faith is. First Kings chapter three, verse nine. Therefore give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, and I may discern between good and evil for who is able to judge this great people of yours. The speech please the Lord, and behold, I have done according to your words. God is never gonna give you riches. What God's going to do is he's going to give you something that will allow you to or acquire riches, whether it be when Elijah went to the woman and allowed her to fill up the jugs of oil so that she could sell it for money. He's gonna give you the talent, the ability, everything that you need to acquire rich Solomon as he's become king because it's a promise that was fulfilled by God that Solomon ended up instead of asking for all the things that most other kings asked for he did something that God was truly pleased with which was God will always give you wisdom and he asked for this and this made God very happy this was the start of a journey with Solomon that ended up making him very much pleasing to the Lord so what ends up happening with that is he starts to build an altar to the Lord and that he started showing this epitome of wisdom to everyone in the kingdom and people from far and wide started hearing about Solomon the king who had ultimate wisdom to discern between basically good and evil basically to judge the way that God would judge to have wisdom the way that God would have wisdom and nobody ever saw someone like this of course David and everyone was amazing but no one ever had the wisdom of God that Solomon did and they started bringing bunches of, of trade and people from different areas to basically do business with Solomon and this ended up making him very successful but what ends up happening is that this success ends up leading to riches riches end up making what your faith is or success end up making what what your faith is and they end up forgetting what they actually started this for which was for God wealth tends to lead you away from God because it gives you a vanity of pleasure the first Kings chapter 8 verse 33 when your people Israel are defeated before an enemy because you have sinned against the Lord and when they turn back to you and confess your name and pray make supplications to you in this temple then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your people of Israel and bring them back to the land which you gave their father. Solomon had built the temple and he made it a dedication to the Lord Solomon ended up becoming one of the wealthiest men in history if not the wealthiest where his nation was I think it was almost doubled or tripled from David's because of everybody hearing about who Solomon was. There are plenty of people that are successful that are not close to God. This is the whole motive of what Christianity, it's not about gaining success or money or any of that. It's about spreading the word of God. Even if you are not successful, you are, if you are allowing people to hear the good word of the Bible, this is what allows you to be a strong Christian and not a soft one. It doesn't matter how much money you have to do that. It just matters, are you giving the good news? And it doesn't matter if someone is rich or poor that you give this news to that it is given first Kings 11 King Solomon loved many foreign women as well as the daughter of Pharaoh women of the Moabites Ammonites Edomites Sidians and Hittites the nations of whom the Lord said to the children of Israel you shall not intermarry with them nor will they with you surely they will turn your hearts away after their gods Solomon clung to these in love women that aren't chasing after God's heart end up turning you away from God's heart in itself and what ended up happening with Solomon is that he started chasing all these women that God had warned him to not chase after and what they ended up doing is making him become the very person that he did not want to be what it ends up making you forget is that the reason you got here was because of God it was because God gave you the path that you needed to take or the talents that you needed to have or the guidance that you needed to see in order to get to this certain point and when you end up thinking is that almost that you are God now Solomon starts turning towards God that the Lord told him not to do because the women are tempting him teasing him with the pleasure of them and he starts thinking that this is love this has happened to so many people that you get a person that is not a Christian not going to church not doing these things and you think that you can change them but you can't and this is what Solomon ended up doing is that you think that you can change them but then what ends up happening is they start changing you to the person that you won't, don't want to be because at the end of the day this that path is way easier and the path that we choose is way more difficult and if you choose that path 
to go towards a woman to lead you towards the easier life well nine times out of ten you're gonna eventually just be destroyed enough that you go for that path or that life and that's what ends up happening with Solomon. It's never actually said if he actually turned away from what he was doing. We understand what we're doing is not right but the action to turn away from it is the hardest part and what ends up happening with many people this is why I say soft Christians is you allow life to determine what you are doing or where you are at and what ends up happening with that is that you start chasing the world a lot more than you start chasing God. They start chasing the world because they think the world is what determines what faith is. And that's kind of the tease that the world gives you, is they start making it that God is about success. And they start making it that the more success you gain by saying God things, or, or saying biblical verses that you are more godly or less godly and that's why you see a lot of these big churches what they end up doing is at first you know you can probably look at all of them and then when they first got into the you know preaching and and, and giving away bible verses and all of that stuff they were doing it for the right cause they were actually probably trying to chase god but what ends up happening is you end up going towards the money thinking that the bigger the church gets the more godly you are and what that ends up doing is you start leading towards what gets more people into the church what gets more people towards you what gets more money flowing in because to you that's what God brings is more money that's why you see a lot of these big-time pastors where you will hear some of their preaching and you're like whoa that is terrible but it's because at first they were trying to chase God, but then they ended up thinking that God was money, and then money then becomes their God. And that's what exactly happened to Solomon. Solomon ended up thinking that pleasure was his God. So the more pleasure he chased, the more happy he was. That was the God that he should chase. And again, money, sex, food, all of that stuff. This is all said in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 10 whatever my eyes desired I did not keep from them I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure for my heart rejoiced in all my labor and this was my reward from all my labor and then I looked at all my works that my hands had done and on the labor which I had toiled and indeed all was vanity and grasping for the wind there was no profit under the Sun he worked really hard for all of the pleasure in life that's what he worked really hard for which of course that's kind of what we all go for as well you know when you're working really hard you want to enjoy the pleasure of life but again like I said before he ended up making pleasure his God and that he worked hard not to please God and not to appease what God wanted him to do but he worked hard for his own pleasure and this is why I say it's very dangerous to use success as a, uh, a guide for how close you are to God because what you end up doing is you start working for pleasure and one of two things can happen you either don't get it and you keep working towards pleasure and then you change yourself in order to gain some sort of pleasure or you get it and your pleasure has become your God so all you do is start diving more into the vanity of the world instead of what God gave you to do at the end of the day all of us we start off trying to do good for God but again the way that America has shown and the way that you can see from the story of Solomon is that you start chasing pleasure as your God and you start working hard so that you can gain pleasure or you want an abundance of pleasure whether it be with food women whatever it may be you end up trying to chase pleasure and this is what leads so many people far from God is you end up forgetting what you were doing in the first place the point of God and what God brings by faith and by works is that you're continually spreading the Word of God and you're continually getting people people that will hear you know not everybody will hear it but you're continually trying to get people to God so that they can hear the Word of God they can hear that they don't have to struggle in their life that they can continue to rely on God for big things and like I said not everyone's going to do it you know that's why Jesus said to brush your uh, sandals off and move on to the next town because not everyone's going to do it that's the whole key is so that you can preach this news and try and remain in God's presence you work hard 
and God will give you pleasurable things. But you work hard to please God. You work hard to continue to spread the word of God. And you work hard for God. And the pleasurable things will come. But when you start working hard to gain pleasurable things, at the end of the day, you will turn from God. And your God will then be pleasure. Pleasure becomes pain in abundance because it's all vanity. Smells like hard work and determination, boys. Hit that like and subscribe if you like this video. I appreciate you very much. Um, comment down below which of the verses that you saw in Solomon's life did you see that really kind of speak to you? And let me know down in the comments down below which one, which part of Solomon's life do you see that you're starting to see in your life? And maybe you need to make a change. As always, guys, praise God, love God. He's great all the time. Love you all. Peace.